everyone, I'm Jacqueline, this is Andrew, my husband. Um, I'm the author of The Lost Libya Chronicles and I'm on the board for Lycan's Growth Support Network. And today we're here in part three, I swear this is the last, the last part of this interview. Um, and essentially what we've been talking about, if you haven't seen the first two videos, definitely check those out because um, I'm talking to my husband Andrew about <laughs> yes, you. What it's like from his perspective to date, be married, and live with somebody that has lichen sclerosis and how that impacted our sex life and the obstacles that, that he faced, that we faced. Um, we kind of discuss all of that. So if you haven't watched those two, check those out first because they're kind of in chronology, chronological order. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know. I have difficulty with words sometimes. But yeah, so in the last one we left off where we were talking about dilators and I mentioned how Andrew would, not not every time because I would do my dilators very frequently, um, but how he would sometimes sit with me while I did them and they weren't always like, you know, pleasurable. Sometimes we would just talk and have a conversation about our day. Like we wouldn't have a serious conversation, but like, mm -hmm. You know, just how was your day? And I would just be in and out with the dilator and stretching a little here. And, you know, you'd be like, oh, yeah, you know, work was this. And <laughs> did you hear about that? Yeah, just, you know, and it, and it was good because I think, again, like us being able to be so calm and that kind of what we were doing, again, really helped desensitize and take away, you know, what used to be a really high charged, stressful, painful situation kind of you know normalized it for us and kind of made it feel a lot safer so thank you because I really appreciate you you know doing that and, and sitting with me and while I did that you know um, I yeah. think it was just as good for you as it was for me mm -hmm. uh, to be really really honest um, again uh, to from the, the last part of the video we to, to finally see you in a point being able to, to penetrate something anything uh, without uh, cringing and, and was tearing. was really uh, it was really nice uh, to see uh, <laughs> I don't know how, know how else to put it because it was I never thought that we were gonna get to that point again uh, again when we first started we had a name and literally like no information mm -hmm. um, and uh, I trust you, uh, you have a PhD, so I trust in your ability to go research things. And like, <laughs> if, if you were having a hard time finding information, um, I, I, someone like me, like I would have never heard about anything like this ever. Uh, so it was, it was really neat to see you having taken steps and be like, okay, well, we're going to start. And again, like it's a, it, it, it takes some time, but like every day you were really diligent about, uh, doing it. You know, the, the first time was was a little weird because you were still kind of uncomfortable. You were still exploring. And again, uh, we'd had conversations about you being, you know, growing up as a girl into a woman. And like, there was no conversation. Like, no one really talked about anything like that. Mm -hmm. So, and I remember um, at the very early on, I would always tell you, have fun. Yeah. Uh, every single time I would... You did every single time. And like, even though at first I was like crying as I like would go into the bedroom because I was like, this is going to hurt. This is going to suck. Why? And, you know, not to break from that, but I think for, I don't know about you, but like for me, I had to wrap my head around the fact that at 30 some odd years old, I had to lie in bed with dilators and work with these things so that my body would be able to have penetrative sex. I don't think that's ever something no. I thought I would be doing definitely at like 31 years old. I don't know about you. You probably never thought that your wife at 31 would need to be using vaginal dilators so that we could maybe one day have, have penetrative sex. So I think that really is a thing that you have to work through. It is. And, and again, like you, you had always told me and like, I had never heard of stories about needing to use any kind of dilator for, to have a, a healthy anything like mm -hmm. that. It was, it was purely a, a enjoyment aspect. And this was something that you had to do for your health. And I've never once heard, um, once again, before you and finding, uh, Kathy and all that and being like, 
hey, what, what, what is this? And the sort of like, no, the, there's a process. You can do this. It's just, it's, it's going to be different for everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, but like, you can make huge strides um, of, as long as you're being diligent about it. And it was amazing to see the progress that you had done. Because once again, from the very beginning, this pinky sized, uh, like, needle thing uh going up to something that was you know uh bigger than what i am which ultimately is probably what you're aiming for anyways mm -hmm. uh was was remarkable to see that it stopped it stopped being painful it, it, there was always a discomfort there was always a little something um so there is part of like living with that but you were always really honest about how you were feeling afterwards and mm -hmm. especially early on there was lots of conversations when I'd come we'd sit down and like you said we would chit chat about this that in the kitchen sink uh and then we'd have a debrief about how you actually felt like emotionally physically um mentally about you know having to do it every day because it is exhausting like mm -hmm. yeah yeah no it is so obviously I worked with those for some time definitely some months and it took some time to kind of work up to like the biggest one and um i stayed on the biggest one for a while it was i kind of had an issue getting like the full thing in and again we never gave a we never put a time frame on this we never put like a by x date we'll be having sex it was just still indefinite but there's a goal at the end we just don't know when the goal will happen we'll get there when we get there it was always both of our mentalities so I was working with the fifth dilator and then um, bought an actual dildo because the dilator in the set was smaller than he was still and I knew that if I could fit something that was bigger than him in me, then it was very likely that we could have sex successfully. So I started working with that and I was working with that for quite some time and then I... I think, yeah, no, it was not on, okay, this was not, I swear this was not deliberate, but it was Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. We don't celebrate Valentine's Day, we don't care. But it was just happened to be that day, and I was doing my dilators, and I just knew, I just knew, I was like, I'm ready now. And I came out of the bedroom, and I said, okay, do you want to try and have sex? Like, again, no pressure, there was no pressure to, like, climax there was no pressure to finish we were like almost like you know just see if you can even get in and, and move around a bit and if you do then great and we can stop there if we need to so how did you feel when I came out of the bedroom that morning because I know that you definitely felt nervous about having sex because you didn't want to hurt me and you know even after all the the dilator work it, there's something very different about like seeing you do something like that to then you me getting into a a position that we had done frequently before and like knowing what was going to happen next um was um, terrifying actually uh because we had gone a year and a bit uh without having had that that exchange between us hadn't happened um and it, to to go back to that place was was something that came up. Uh, I know that even after all the work, like it might not have been founded on anything, but just I I was scared about you getting hurt because if we did this, a it could have put you back. Um, yeah, it could have, and that was a huge fear for me. Yeah, uh, it could have put you back. Um, I could have done something, and again, like I'm not a, a very small individual. I'm not particularly graceful either, so. Um, there, there was some concern uh, about that, and uh, mostly in, in, in regards to safety and health. Like, I also didn't want to be the reason that you got pushed back because we had to stop again because of a tear or whatever the case may be. So um, there was an excitement at the sheer idea and prospect of doing it, uh, but there was a lot of apprehension from my part, uh, mm -hmm. just in virtue of, um, I trust you, but... Uh, I don't, I, I haven't been doing anything like. Yeah, I actually think like you were more apprehensive than I was because we had had some conversations about having sex again and you were always like, yeah, yeah, yeah like we'll get there when we get there. And I was like, no, I think it could be soon. And you was like, oh, you know, um, but yeah. Uh, and so, but you did say yes. Yes. Um, and we went for it. And what happened? Um. Uh, we had sex. It was great. 
<laughs> um, there was no pain at all on my part. He went in and I was like, no, that doesn't hurt. He was like, okay. And then we just went for it. I think he knows me very well and he could very much tell that it was all pleasure and nothing bad was going on. And so, yeah, we both climaxed and finished and then cried our fucking eyes out. <laughs> oh, did we ever. The second it was done, I just like cried like I had never cried before for so many reasons. I just, I never thought that I could have sex and it wouldn't hurt. For me, I had pretty much accepted that at the very, my best case was sex is just going to be a little bit uncomfortable and I'm going to be uncomfortable after. That was like my best case. And I never had a memory of like sex really never like not at all causing me any pain or any discomfort. So I couldn't believe that my body with like and sclerosis was able to do that. And then I was just so happy for us because we put in a lot of work to get to that place. And so yeah, I was just so, I couldn't believe it. I kept crying and saying, it didn't hurt, love. It didn't hurt me. It didn't hurt. I just kept saying over and over and over again. And then you obviously got emotional too. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I also got really emotional about the whole thing. Because, again, I, when when it all started, I sort of just, when, when you had first said that, uh, well, indefinitely. Like we don't, yeah. we don't know what's gonna happen. We have a name, and that's pretty much it. There was a point where we didn't even have a name. It was just, uh, you're small and whatever next. Mm -hmm, yeah. Um, so to to get to a point where we were able to do it uh, was just beautiful. Uh, I mean, the the sheer amount of just support that that we had to show each other to really get through all the hurdles from finding out what it was to where it is. Um, all the hard work that you would put into to everything paid off, um, which was just, it's like a little fairy tale, almost, mm -hmm. so to speak, because, yeah. like, you start off, you were at your lowest, um, really bad spot, and then it, it got to a point where, like, we were able to finally have penetrative sex again, and um, we never thought that we'd get there, no. to be honest. Like, never. There was, there was a good chunk of time um, where we both thought, like, okay, well... We'll just do non-penetrative sex, and that will be what our sex life looks like. But now we can do all of it, and it's wonderful. And ever since that day, we've been having penetrative sex. Um, no pain, no flare-ups, no nothing. So if you're watching and you are struggling with this, there really is hope. And, you know, it might take some work and it might take some time, but you can definitely get there. And I have plenty of content planned out for 2020, 2022, yeah, that's next year, um, on this topic. So definitely stay tuned for that. And um, we're going to pop on in another video to let you know about this exciting announcement. But to wrap this one up, thank you again so much for sharing. I so admire your openness and your honesty. And thank you so much for doing this. And thank you all. We will see you in a couple seconds with our announcement. Bye. Hey, we're back. <laughs> Here to give y'all a little announcement. So Lichen Sclerosis Support Network is going to be hosting our first ever couples meetup. Super exciting. Um, so that's going to be on October 2nd from 2 to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And it's basically going to be a space for couples and partners to kind of get together uh, in a safe space where they can kind of share their experiences and ask questions and learn from each other because LS doesn't just happen to us, it happens to our partners as well and it affects the relationship, not just, you know, one single person. So um, I will make another video next week with more details. For now, you can check out the caption and link in bio to sign up. Thank you so much, and we hope to see you there. Bye!